Hi, and welcome back to the Virtual Elephant YouTube channel. I'm Chris Mutchler, Principal Enterprise Architect and VCDX257. In this video, part 9 of my VCF Home Lab series, I'm going to show you how to get the vSphere Kubernetes Service, or VKS, Supervisor Cluster deployed within your environment. Now this video is a long time coming, and I'm super excited to share this with you. So let's get started. All right, we're gonna jump right in. You can see here on the screen that we have our vSphere client open, and we're going to go ahead and start installing the VKS supervisor cluster by coming over here to workload management. Now from here in the workload management workflow, you can see that we're going to be installing a number of things to be able to deploy it. And we have a couple options early on around vSphere zone deployment or cluster deployment. Since I'm deploying this in a VCF consolidated architecture and I don't have multiple clusters where I can do zones, we're going to be doing just a simple cluster deployment. Now from here, we're gonna see that it's going to recognize that I have my vCenter server hooked up. We're gonna give this a simple name, VE-M01 supervisor. And then from there, we're going to select the cluster. Now here you can give it a zone name. This is optional, but I go ahead and I give it one anyway of VE Lab. From there, we're going to hit next, and now we're going to start looking at the storage policy. So this is going to read in all of the storage policies that you have within your VCF environment. So you can see that I've already created that VCN storage policy for RAID 5, and so I'm gonna go ahead and use that for the control plane, the ephemeral disks, and the image cache to make sure that everything is taking up the least amount of space by while getting the maximum resiliency. Now from here, we're gonna start filling out some information on the network itself. We're gonna to have to select a network mode. You can do DHCP or static. We're going to be doing static here. So we wanna make sure we click that. And then once we've selected static, we're gonna go out, go here and fill out some information around the network itself. We're gonna tell it the network that we're using, the floating VIP, the DNS servers, the search domain, and of course it pre-populates those NTP servers for us that it got from VCF earlier. So you can see here that we're gonna use the deep workgroup VM management, and we're gonna use that 10.2.10 subnet that we have, and then we're gonna start specifying the gateway, and then the DNS servers you can see are pre-popped there to point to our PyHole DNS servers. And of course, we're gonna tell it home.virtualelephant.com for its DNS search name. Now from here, we're going to do the workload network next. Now from here, we're gonna tell it what virtual distributed switch we want to use. Again, we only have the one. It's going to already have recognized what edge cluster that we have within the environment. So we'll let it select that because we do have NSX working here. Now, one of the big choices that you do have is whether or not you're going to turn on NATing uh, within NSXT. Now, one of the differences between typical open source style Kubernetes and VKS is that you have to allocate two different sliders, one for ingress and one for egress. Now, these aren't typically things that you have to do within a regular Kubernetes deployment, but that VKS requires of you. You can also see here on the screen that we have the service cider, and this is what we're typically used to just specifying when we use like a cube admin command, and we go ahead and initialize the cluster. So now these networks don't exist anywhere on my physical network. We've not configured anything on them from a VLAN perspective on the spine leaf. All I've done is set up my PFSense so that anything on the 10.6.00 slash 16 network is going to be NATed and routed out through my PFSense firewall. So what I've done here is for the ingress, I'm going to specify 10.6.00 slash 22, I think. I'm going to change this because I have it as a slash 24 right now. We want to make sure that we have more than enough space within our network for anything that VKS is going to want to do. 
and you can actually see on the egress side the example is for us to specify a slash 20 that's probably totally overkill within my environment so we're going to go ahead and make this slightly smaller So now that I've updated that ingress cider 10600 slash 22, we're going to go ahead and specify 10640.0 slash 22 for the egress cider. Now we're going to go ahead and click next, and then we're going to review and confirm what we've done here as far as entering all of the values for the supervisor cluster to use. Now the final thing for us to select is the size of the supervisor control plane nodes that we want to deploy. Now I'm doing this in my lab environment. It's going to be relatively limited what I do with VKS and the supervisor cluster itself. So I've gone ahead and just selected the small configuration, which is four vCPUs and 16 gigs of memory. And then I've also added a DNS name for the API server of supervisor.home.virtualelephant.com and I've made sure that that DNS record exists within my PyHole DNS servers. So we're going to export the configuration just to save for later and then we're going to, once that's done, go ahead and click finish and now that we can see here that the supervisor cluster is running and it's going to be created inside of vSphere. Now, this workflow, again, like any other, will take a certain amount of time depending on the load of your environment and the type of hardware that you have behind it. In my environment, this actually took about 30 minutes um, for it to complete, 35 minutes for it to complete. And then once it was done, I was able to go ahead and actually start creating tenant workloads. Now, one of the things I am gonna do here is actually log into the NSX manager we're going to look at our network topology and then the segments. And we're going to see here in a few minutes that the TKG or this VKS workflow, my apologies. So one of the things that we are going to see get created inside of NSXT are two segments that VKS is going to deploy one for that ingress and one for that egress cider that we specified in the workflow. Otherwise, we're just going to let this run. And it, like I said, it took about 30, 35 minutes within my home lab when I did this um, for it to complete. And then once it was completed, then I had a working supervisor cluster, which then allows me to start deploying tenant workloads within the environment. So again, we're going to let this run right now, and then I'll join you at the end of it.
Okay, there you have it. We now have a running VKS supervisor cluster within our VCF home lab environment. And this is going to allow us to be able to deploy tenant workloads within vCenter server to run Kubernetes. And this is just one more of the enterprise platforms that we have available to us within the home lab, rounding out VKS, Rancher, OpenShift, and then running it in a bare metal or really just a vanilla VM style and initializing the cluster with kubeadmin. Now, I like running Kubernetes in a variety of ways within my environment to be able to compare and contrast, to be able to figure out which one lets me take the most advantage of this system that I'm running underlying the infrastructure, and to be able to just play and stay current on all forms of Kubernetes. Now, in part nine, I'm actually going to show you how to deploy the NSX Advanced Load Balancer, and that's going to be one of the key differentiators for VKS, being able to tie in the NSX Advanced Load Balancer and running the AKO operator within our workload clusters then allows us to create dynamic ingress objects, which then correspondingly create virtual services inside of NSX Advanced Load Balancer for all of our load balancing needs. So I'll show you how in part nine, how to get the NSX Advanced Load Balancer up and running using the SDDC Manager workflow. And then we're going to move on and wrap up the series in part 10 with a day two LCM activity and upgrade VCF. Now, if you're enjoying this content, please make sure that you subscribe to the Virtual Elephant YouTube channel, that you turn on notifications, and you leave me a comment below. As always, feel free to reach out to me on Twitter or X at Chris Mutchler, and be sure to find me on LinkedIn. I'm there as well. I'm posting about this series too, and I look forward to talking to you next time.